Hello class, this is section 3.2 and we are going to discuss higher order linear equations. So a lot of this chapter is just going to be the same things that we've learned in the chapter about second order linear equations except that we just have higher derivatives. But conceptually, more or less everything is the same. So a uh, nth order linear, uh, I guess I should say one thing yn is defined as take the derivative n times okay so as you see the little number in brackets that's the number of times you take the de derivative but generally you have a nth order linear equation as follows minus 1 plus p1x y n minus 2 blah 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 until you get p n minus 1 times y plus p n should be n these are all functions of x of course equals x. Right, so this is an nth order linear equation. So again, we want to have all the y's, the derivatives of y's by themselves. And if fx equals 0, we call this a homogeneous equation. very much like we did in the previous section with uh, second order polynomials. And we also have, I guess I should say one thing, um, so we would prefer to have the top term, the yn term by itself if we can. So if you, usually we can always divide by the, t whatever terms in, is multiplied by the, the top derivative here. So we can always write it down like this usually. So one important thing is that we have a principle of superposition. Now remember that this only works for uh, homogeneous equations. Equations of order n, that is with fx equals zero, Okay, um, let's see. So this is zero for a uh, homogeneous. If y1, y2, y3, blah, 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 are solutions to the equation. Let's say it's yk, okay? Then y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus c3 y3 plus blah 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 plus ck yk is also a solution. So this works more or less the same way as it did in the previous chapter. I guess I'll say one more thing, and there's also an um, existence uniqueness principle. So if we have this equation, if the terms p0x, p1x, pnx are continuous in an interval a that we care about, oh, interval i that we care about, Then, if for 
A and I, we have that. So remember that for linear equations, you only need, needed one bit of information. And for second order equations, you needed two pieces of information. You need the information about the function and the derivative. It shouldn't surprise you that for n degree equations, we need n pieces of information. B1, double prime a equals b2, blah, 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 y n minus 1 a equals b n minus 1. Only if we have n pieces of information, then we have Uh, unique, that is one and only one solution. So conceptually this should make sense. Um, you know that for a linear equation, for one which just involves a y, y prime and x, you'll get one parameter c, right? Um, so you just need it one piece of initial value information to get an answer to get a spe specific answer for a second order equation you needed two pieces of information you need you needed the initial value and the initial value of the derivative so it turns out that that works that scales up like you expect so if you have a n order differential equation you need n pieces of information like uh, y y prime y double prime y until y n minus 1 so initial value problems in this world will have n pieces of information in them. 